Hello, and welcome to another video with Maxwell's Virtual Aviation. Today, we're going to run through the start and taxi checklist that I'm working on for the Douglas DC-3 here in uh, Brigham City, Utah. I've just come from this area on another trip, and I drove right by this airport. It has a very robust training facility, and it looks like there are a lot of private jets that land here. So it was really cool. And uh, it'll be fun to fly out of here today. But, as I mentioned, the reason for this video is that I am working on a checklist for the Douglas DC-3 for my own use. Uh, if there's interest, I will uh, put it out there into the internet. But mainly it's just for me to remember what it takes to start and run this aircraft. So, let's get started, shall we? We have just climbed up the very sloping steps into the aircraft and everything as it should be, so... Uh, it is a crisp fall morning here uh, by the Wasatch Mountains there, and they are that beautiful. So we need our windows open and get the stuffiness out of here. All right, so checklist time. So pre-start checklist. Ground power. Go ahead and connect that. Good. Uh, everything's starting to come on there. Our beacon. Go ahead. Come on. Fuel left and right. Generally, I am just using the arrow keys to move the camera around for this. There is my left fuel selector to main. My right fuel selector to main. All right. On. Elevator trim. Negative two degrees. Now, I spoke about this in my other video. This is by design to a point, And this is what you need to do in order to have a successful takeoff. So, there is our... Elevator trim, there's 0, 4, 8, and 12. And we're just going to move this between the 0 and 4 in the down position, like so. That is set. And then our cowl flaps can go ahead and come open. I really wish Microsoft did not make it so that if you are using the scroll wheel, it would, it would lock, basically, on that. All right, and cowl flaps are open. Pre-start checklist is complete. Now we're going to move over to the start checklist. Now, again, this is primarily for my use in the simulator, and this is how I start the engines, uh, but they pretty much work every time when I do this. Um, and this is a combination of real-world sim work that I've done to try to make something that'll work pretty much every time. So, prop, and full forward here. Oh, all my levers aren't set. There we go. Alright, so we're going to start our right engine first. So that prop can go ahead and full forward. I just want to make a note that I just got some beautiful DC-3 levers from I Dig Stuff. Um, I did have another pair of DC-3 levers. These ones are far superior in the fact that there's actually metal in their construction. They're solidly built. And, they re they're, and they're larger. And they really add to the immersion of flying this aircraft. I'll throw a link uh, down below. I'm not sponsored or anything, but I think that if you spend a lot of time in the uh, the DC-3, like I do, that getting a proper set of levers in the proper configuration is kind of important. All right. Throttle. It's going to be cracked. There we go. Mixture. Set the idle cutoff. All right. So we're going to prime for five seconds on the right engine. So one, two, three, four, five. That's done. Magnetos are going to go ahead and come to both. All right, we are going to energize the right side here. Fuel boost pump can go ahead and come on. All right, so the next happens in really rapid sequence, so I'm not going to talk through it, but they are starter mesh, prime on, mixture, auto rich. So we're going to do that real quick. All right, mesh, prime, Auto wrench. And it sounds like we have an engine start. Fuel pressure, we're going to go ahead and check that. Excellent. And while we're looking at that, we're going to go ahead and take the fuel boost off. Fuel pressure, eh, just below the green, but we're only idling, so that's understandable. 
Engine temps, we're gonna monitor those. Nothing spiking out at me, so that's pretty good. All right, and that's the start for that engine. So, one more time. The prop for the left engine is gonna come full forward. Throttle is gonna be cracked. Mixture is in idle cutoff. We're gonna prime for five seconds. Four, five. Magnetos are gonna go to both. We're gonna go ahead and energize the left side. We're gonna let that slowly build up there. Fuel boost pump, gonna go ahead and come on. And then it will be met, starter mesh, prime on, and mixture auto wrench. So mesh, prime, and auto wrench. And we have a good start on that side. Check our fuel our fuel pressure, bring our boost pump off, monitor engine instruments. All right, start checklist is complete and it worked as written. Both engines are started and running. All right, time for the after start checklist here. Battery is gonna go ahead and come on. Ground power is going to be disconnected. Generator will go ahead and come on. Avionics, those will come on. Navigation lights, they'll go ahead and come on. And we will get our altimeter set. After start checklist is complete. Let's take a look outside, shall we? So this is a something I picked up from flightsim.to, which is a better representation of the original World Travel Airlines that we had in earlier versions of the sim. But look how pretty that looks. Looks like we've got some ground help, and, but you can see we still have our chocks on and uh, our door is open. So let's do the taxi checklist. We're gonna just taxi out for the grass there. So our doors are gonna be secure, and that's all of them. There we go, so chalks away. Flight controls, are gonna go ahead and get checked. Full movement there, that looks good. I've got reach on both, that feels good. And our tail wheel is going to be uh, unlocked, which it is. We are ready for taxi. So we're just going to taxi to the runway. Um, we're not going to make a big deal out of it. This isn't a, a revenue flight or anything. I'm just trying to get a feel for the aircraft. As a matter of fact, we could just taxi straight ahead. Um, and I think we're going to do that. So we will uh, taxi down to the edge of the runway. It's a fairly long runway, although I think we've got, yeah, we've got it shorter on this side. So here we go. So parking brake can go ahead and come off. All right, and we'll uh, break away power. One of the nice things about these iDig stuff throttles is they are longer than the standard throttles. And uh, give you really fine which is really necessary when you're trying to get uh, very minute changes. Now it should be noted that maybe in 2024 they'll actually implement a good swivel, swiveling tail, tail wheel, pastoring tail wheel, so that you can actually taxi in the DC3 correctly, which is normally with engines and no brakes. We don't use our brakes when taxiing in Douglas DC3. It's all engine power. And I think that a lot of these older mechanical aircraft that just comes off of something that doesn't 
communicate very well in the sim, and that is just feel. I don't, I don't know. I've never, I've never taxied a DC three, but I do know that they kind of be uh, a bear on the ground, and that they do take most of the work. I also know though that we don't use our brakes in general, uh, because while they're not very, our brakes aren't actually very powerful. They can't, can't love I do love how they they put this this um this beacon tower right right at the edge of the runway there. That's great. That's great. We're actually going to shortcut this a little bit so that our wing doesn't take it out. And we'll just go across the grass here. It'll be fine. Split our throttles a little bit. A little bit more speed on that outside. Lost hatches look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I was really impressed with them when I was down there. Down for a, uh, a whip meetup. Then uh, I went to Promontory Point, which I wanted to do for a while. Uh, I had a really good time. So, all right, here we go. Uh, we've got the jerkies back. We were really doing really, really well, and then I just start getting my micro stutters, and that's super annoying. Um, stuff to work on in the future. Anyway, it doesn't ma help that I'm, you know, recording this on the same time that I'm flying. So take off. Uh, takeoff is designed for when you're at the end of the runway or if you're right before it. I didn't split them just because of uh, size constraints. Again, these are just memory items to fly the virtual aircraft. So hatches and windows should be secure, so we'll do that. Ahem, we'll, we'll do that. There we go. Hopefully these stutters stop. It's annoying. Nope, I don't think they're going to. And we were, like I said, we were doing so well. So well, and now we're stuttering. Landing light, go ahead and come on. Fuel boost pumps, go ahead and come on. Cowl flaps can be moved to trail. Flaps one quarter, or as required, one quarter as a note is two notches down, and that's generally sufficient. I don't know, and then uh, let's see here. Parking brake is off. Don't tell me why I added turning the parking brake off to the uh, checklist. Uh, tail wheel can go ahead and get locked. Uh, in the DC-3, you do take off with a locked tail wheel. All right, tail wheel is now locked. All right, take off checklist complete. Looking at my chart here, my takeoff power is going to be 48, 48 inches manifold pressure at 27 RPM. Generally, I just take everything to red, to, to red line and call it good. A couple of things about taking off in the DC-3 that a that uh, the pilot, one of the pilots of our local DC-3, Miss Montana, uh, we kind of chatted about it because I had mentioned that you know I, I fly virtually. Uh, it's really important, A, that you understand that you can get the tail up without rudder authority. Right? This is really important. We need to keep the tail down until we have rudder authority and we can actually move the aircraft. It is possible to pop the tail up, not have rudder authority, then you're in a world of hurt. Secondly, we take off at about 80 knots. Now, I don't know if, if the real one, but I know virtually that we can get this thing in the air at about 50 knots and we'll start climbing, which was one of the issues that we had with, when we uh, start with a uh, zero elevator trim. So it's really important that we push. We push on the yoke, we keep those wheels on the pavement until about 80. Then we relax, we get those wheels off the ground. But A, we wanna make sure that our, our uh, tail is on the ground until we actually have rudder authority. And secondly, we wanna push on the yoke and make sure that we stay on the ground until we hit flying speed, which is about 80 knots. So we are either about to muck it up entirely or we'll do a decent uh, a decent takeoff. Just as a quick note to myself, my meter power is 42.25.50 and my climb power is 35.23.50. Generally, meter power is take it out of the green. Uh, climb power will be 35 and 23.50 and that's 35 on the, on the nose. 23.50 is halfway roughly in between uh, 25, or uh, 20 and 25. And that's kind of how I, I memorize where these are, just as kind of rough estimates. In reality, we need to remember I would have a, a flight engineer or a co-pilot who would be managing once. Once I'm flying, he takes control of my throttles and my props, and I simply call to him, 
in virtual world, I'm doing everything. So that is a difference. We have to remember the DC-3 is a two-person airplane. It's designed as a two-person airplane and it's flown as a two-person airplane. So when we do it as a one-person airplane, uh, saturation to try to fly it correctly happens and that's simply because we're doing the tasks of two people. So we need to remember that, give ourselves a little bit of grace when it comes to flying this big old bird. All right, uh, let's, let's go. Uh, take off power if you please. Landing gear is up and indicating up and fuel boost pumps can go ahead and come up. The reason that I have that is because I have a habit of forgetting to turn those off. Alright, we can go ahead and climb power 35, 23, 50. So, climb power. There's 35 ish. 23.50 is halfway between 20 and 25 roughly. Oops, that was too much. Watching it right about there. Close enough for government work. Flaps can go ahead and come all the way up. All right, and uh, we're continued for our climb. So that is just working through the checklist in the Douglas DC-3, and Utah sure looks pretty here in the fall. And uh, we're gonna climb on out of here. Start making our way towards uh, Hotel of Idaho, which is the next stop for this World Travel DC-3. So, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, if you found this checklist interesting or you'd like to maybe see a copy of it, if there's enough interest, I will throw it up somewhere and provide a link to it. Uh, like I said, I find it really useful. Uh, we do have a uh, landing section of the checklist, but uh, it's only half a page. Uh, it's only half a page, so that you can fold it over and clip it to the clipboard on your yoke which is what I do. Look at all that traffic on I-15. Um, is what I do. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, it's a little bit of DC-3 flying here. I will admit that uh, this is a really fun airplane to fly. Might as well take it all the way up to the cruise, I guess. Why not? And that is the nice thing about this route, is basically if you're coming from Salt Lake Pocatello, probably from Salt Lake Pocatello Butte. Probably up to Butte would probably be a good, good flight plan for an aircraft of this size. Kind of follow what the Union Pacific did with the Special, basically. I mean, you'd be in competition with the Union Special. But what they would do overnight, um, we will do in about, I don't know, maybe three to four hours. I don't know, I've never actually flown it. Who knows, one of these days I might find out. got a sound mod on this. I've got obviously a uh, slightly good delivery on it. But other than that, as far as flight flight model goes, it's a stock aircraft. And 
I have fought and worked hard to fly a stock aircraft. And I think that that's kind of important. Because, I don't know, it flies right. I think it, my, my discussion is up. Uh, for the record, just as a note, you see that interchange down there that I'm looking at right there? It is very annoying. It is very annoying. All right, let's drop it to cruise. Cruising this aircraft, I've got set 30 and 20, 50. So pretty much what you want to do then, all right, is uh, get her down and then just bring it to 30. And then 20, 50 is basically 20. Like so. And that right there is pretty much your cruise setting. Now we're off to Pocatello. You know, honestly, I don't think it gets any better than that. And this is why flight sim is so fun. So cool. All right, well, we'll catch you on the next video. <laughs> I guess I'm off to Pocatello.